This is the first Sunday of the Advent season. This is the beginning, if you like, of the, the focus towards the celebration of the Christmas gift of Christ our Saviour. He came into this world and he brought light into the darkness. Our reading this morning is a very familiar one. It's taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah and it's reading from chapter 9 verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done. As people rejoice when they harvest their corn, or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them, and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their blood-stained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time, the Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. <clears throat> and so our reading, this reading from the Old Testament, has become one of the traditional readings for the Advent season. And I think it's an appropriate reading because it focuses on the promise of a new beginning with the coming of the promised Messiah. And what it tells us is that things will be different. People who walked in the darkness would find themselves suddenly in the light. They would be no longer groping around in their spiritual darkness, uncertain about who God was and what he wanted from his people. The coming of Jesus into the world <clears throat> would become a world-changing event. And of course that prophecy came true. Jesus came into the world. He began to shine his light on a dark and a sinful world. Jesus began to show up the cracks. He began to reveal our human weakness and our human failure. He showed us how we ought to get our act in order. In other words, Jesus quite literally showed us up. He made people feel 
uncomfortable. He made people aware of their weakness. And needless to say, people didn't like it. We all know the result of that uneasiness that Jesus brought to people, especially people who thought that they had a lot to lose if Jesus was allowed to continue his teaching. And so we know that they plotted to be rid of him. But then, that's an Easter story. The first Sunday of Advent tackles an uncertain future. What it tells us is that God's promises to us is of a safe passage and a secure future. He tells us that he fulfills his promise. Just as Jeremiah told us, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days and that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they call her, the Lord our justice. In fact, theology teaches us that the, the whole of the Old Testament can be summarized in many ways by the word promise. God makes a promise. And then as the coming of Jesus dawns, he will actually keep his word. Because of that, one commentator says that the Judeo-Christian religion is actually built on a promise, on the covenant of God with Abraham. Promises, therefore, are sacred to us because the very one who made the first move to promise is God himself. What then is the appropriate response to a promise? Since God keeps and fulfills his promise, we are to hinge our lives on it. We are to trust that God will continually remember us. Scripture reminds us that we are to keep our gaze on him and on him alone. We are to train our minds and our hearts to behold God all the time. To have him as our one and only desire. And this is where we find the theme of waiting. Waiting in this season of Advent. We all really experience some form of waiting. Many of us would like to find where we ultimately belong in the great scheme of things. We have our dream job, so we continually apply and go through a series of interviews some are waiting for the promise of a brighter future that is partially settled by a university degree. Some are waiting for the time when they meet their partner who will become the perfect one for them. 
or the time of a marriage proposal. The longer we wait, the more precious it becomes. And in all those moments of waiting, the heart is shaped by that one and only desire. It makes the heart fall in love to the only one. And thus the season of Advent has a corresponding grace. We pray that God will teach us to focus on him, to focus on him alone, to gaze upon him, to put our trust in his promises, that whatever happens in the future, as the gospel warns us of the signs of confusion and perplexity in nature and in relationships amongst people, God will not forget his promise, his promise to save us. He will keep us safe and prepare us for a secure dwelling place. The Advent promise is a promise of a new beginning, not the sad ending that Jesus appeared, that Easter appeared at first to bring, but a victorious proclamation of his presence and power in the resurrection. A child was born to us, a son was given to us, and he became in power a wonderful counsellor, a mighty God, a Prince of Peace. And that, of course, is what Jesus has become. And over the centuries, he has become Prince of Peace in the hearts of many, many millions of people. He is a wonderful counsellor. He is mighty God. Each Christmas season, we in the church have been given the task of bringing the message, of bringing the message of good news to the world. In a world where the church's message is becoming more and more difficult to proclaim, it is no easy task to highlight the significance of the Christian message of Christmas and the coming of Christ. We're living in a country which has become, as some describe, as multicultural. And it's certainly true that we have in our country people from a whole variety of different cultural backgrounds. We have a, a, people who believe different things, different religions, different interpretations of all of them. Even our Christian faith has got a wide divergence of opinion in it about certain things. But I believe that Christmas still belongs to us in the church. And we have a responsibility to ensure that it remains an important festival and celebration of the church. Christmas is not an excuse for a, a shopping pre spree or a or just a holiday time, a good time for a party, a time for celebration, however, is a focus on the coming of Jesus, a birthday celebration, 
the bringing of new life a new light into the world. A celebration that God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son into our midst to bring the light of his love into a world of darkness. The world finds it very difficult to accept the real message of Christmas because it means acknowledging the light of God's love and because that light is such a revealing light an exposing light it does make people feel a bit uncomfortable people don't like their weaknesses being shown up I think we all like to think we're good people We like to think that we are doing the right thing. And so we would prefer perhaps to have a duller light. We would prefer to have a Christmas celebration that doesn't ask too many questions. A celebration that doesn't challenge us or demand too much from us. But the coming of Jesus Christ was not just to give us something to celebrate. It wasn't to give us an excuse for a party. It wasn't just to give us an opportunity to go out on a spending spree. It wasn't even just to demonstrate the power and the wonder of God. It was to lead us to a new kind of life, to a new beginning, a new hope, and a new purpose for our lives. Christmas is coming. The church is glad to sing. And let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. All glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.